Okay, so this is my second video in my series on mental health nutrients. And I'm doing this as a little promotion uh, for my whole body mental health consult groups that I have coming up. I talked about this in the last video where I'm going to be having drop-in Zoom groups uh, where you can just pay a small fee and drop in and we can have a discussion about uh, your specific mental health symptoms and what you're doing to try to reverse them and uh, people can give their tips and ideas and I can share a little bit about my perspective uh, and we're just going to be talking about mental health from a more natural holistic perspective and so if that's right up your alley, you're tired of relying on medications or more conventional understandings of these issues and you want an alternative, uh, this would be a place to pop in and just see uh, what, what else there is on the table. Uh, so I encourage you to sign up for my groups there. I have the first three up on my website. You can follow the links to sign up on Eventbrite, uh, wholebodyhealingugene.com slash services, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you. But, um... In the meantime, I'm posting this series of videos on different categories of mental health symptoms and some of the indications I see in terms of uh, what are the primary imbalances we might look at first, what are the main things uh, that I might try with you uh, initially. Now, of course, everything in these videos is going to be oversimplified. There's a lot more complexity and nuance to all this stuff, but I just wanted to point people maybe in the right direction to investigate some of this stuff on their own. So in my first video, I talked about people who are having more mild to moderate mental health issues, just some nagging anxiety and depression. We talked about the importance of a high protein diet when you're having neurotransmitter imbalance. And so regardless of anything I'm talking about, that's a good place to start, right? Like if you're not getting the building blocks <laughs> in your diet, uh, you know, doing other things is only going to do so much. Uh, but uh, for more significant mental health symptoms, we may need to take bigger steps uh, than just like adding more protein into the diet. Um, so my second group I want to talk about are um, kind of the, the foggy brain types. Uh, so what I mean by this are people who are dealing with um, lack of clarity uh, in their thinking. And so this could look like a few different things. I'm going to name some different conditions that may seem totally different, but I often actually I find are pretty similar in terms of treatment. So this is going to be your uh, unstable mood people, right? So bipolar spectrum, you know, any kind of bipolar type disorder or people who just seem to have like really big mood swings, right? Uh, it could be hormonal mood swings, right? That it's correlated with their menstrual cycle, uh, but it also just could seem like really out of the blue, like impulsive mood swings. Um, it could also be like irritability, anger, aggression, right? Especially for like teens or younger people, uh, young adults too, uh, people who just seem to kind of snap out of nowhere, right? Um, and then there are the brain fog folks, right? People who are feeling like they're having some kind of cognitive deficit, right? Where they're just like not thinking clearly. Uh, cotton balls in the brain is what I hear a lot from my clients. Um, and in a really extreme case, this would be like dementia, right? Like early onset dementia or dementia in older people as well. So this is a really wide variety of conditions, right? From bipolar to dementia. And yet I find that there are uh, similar ways to treat these conditions because what I find for a lot of people is that this has to do with insulin resistance in the brain, right? So this is some people have dubbed dementia, for example, as type 3 diabetes. And I really find that this is true for a lot of these kinds of impulsive, aggressive, or just unstable mood type disorders as well, that uh, the brain is really not efficiently getting energy from carbohydrates. And some people will say, well, the brain needs glucose to survive, uh, but that's actually not true. Uh, the it, it can create that uh, little tiny bit of glucose it needs uh, from the liver, and it can mostly run on ketones, which is made from fat. So uh, obviously not everyone does well on a low carbohydrate diet, but what I find is these types of mental health conditions actually do really, really well.
on a low carb diet and that is because their brain is again not uptaking the energy from carbohydrates from glucose efficiently and their brain is basically starved for energy and it's giving them this foggy brain, right, is making their mood unstable, uh, it's making them not think clearly, it's making them lash out really unpredictably, right, they're not getting a steady amount of energy into their brain. And when we switch them into a fat burning state, uh, into ketosis, into uh, using ketones for fuel, a lot of times these people will have this experience of their mind just getting super clear and their mood just getting super steady and stable. Now, it's not magic, right? And it's not necessarily like, oh, you get into ketosis and boom, you're better, right? Actually, a lot of the times as you're making the transition, the symptoms are going to get worse first, right? Because it is hard on your body to make that transition, especially the first time. So there's a little hump you have to get over, uh, and you want to make sure that you have the support you need to get through that hump. Uh, but once you do, Again, a lot of times people show immense improvement in their mental health, in their cognitive functioning, and their cognitive abilities. So I really recommend uh, a ketogenic style diet for these types of people. Um, you know, uh, this uh, also relates to the issue of the hormone moodiness like I was talking about because uh, a lot of times uh, when people are having hormone imbalance, it's related to blood sugar instability, right? It's related to not having steady enough blood sugar that your body is able to produce sex hormones in the correct balance. And so it leads to these PMS type of symptoms. Um, so that is a, a big thing in terms of uh, um, these types of mental fogginess type of disorders. But a caveat I would say is that it has to be a whole foods ketogenic diet. It cannot be junk food keto. It cannot be if it fits your macros keto, right? It really has to be from whole food sources um, and most of your fat intake coming from saturated fats ideally. And this is because another thing that is indicated in these disorders, you don't always see these people coming from a low fat diet, but a lot of the times you see these people coming from a diet where they're eating the wrong kinds of fats, right? So uh, the humans were really meant to eat fats uh, different types of fats in a very specific ratio, right? And a lot of traditional cultures are getting most of their fats from saturated fat, you know, some from mono um, saturated fat, and then um, a very small amount from polyunsaturated fats, right? And what we see in the modern diet is that most people are getting most of their fats from polyunsaturated fat. And this is a big problem, that the ratios are all off. And so people can actually have a deficiency in fatty acids, even if technically it looks like they're getting enough fat in their diet, if the fat is coming from the wrong sources, if it's the wrong type of fat. And so most people are getting most of their fats from fried, like fast food, processed food, restaurant foods, like all these greasy um, restaurant takeout processed foods, right? Because people are using canola oil and soybean oil and corn oil and safflower oil and all, all these really modern oils that are very, very high in the omega-6s. And again, it's creating this fatty acid deficiency in the brain, even though technically you're getting enough fat because you're getting the wrong kinds of fats that your brain is not really able to use. So if we switch that to a whole foods ketogenic diet, a very ancestral, traditional type of ketogenic diet, where you are getting most of your fat intake from animal sources, right, from your beef and your pork and your chicken skin, and also from things like olive oil and avocado, um, which have more of the monounsaturated fats, and the coconut oil, which has saturated fat, um, if you are getting most of your fat from those more ancestral whole food sources, you're going to do a lot better and correct some of those fatty acid deficiencies that are really just a problem in the ratios. Uh, I also do see that sometimes people do have certain deficiencies uh, that I suspect that uh, their symptoms start to get better when we really add in some targeted nutrients. So acetylcholine is one neurotransmitter that has a lot to do with memory and learning and just kind of that mental sharpness, right? 
Uh, so uh, eggs are really high uh, and so I really prioritize eggs for these people and uh, sometimes uh, there is an issue with B12 as well Now you can get this tested and you can always supplement but also really prioritizing red meat so things like lamb uh, and beef and liver if you can tolerate that uh, is going to be really good for correcting any potential deficiency you have there Okay, so that's my little rundown on the first steps to take if you are dealing with any of these kind of foggy brain type of mental health symptoms. Like I said, if you want to talk more about this stuff, if you want to nerd out, if you want to maybe uh, go over a specific case of yourself or a loved one uh, and just be in a group of like-minded people looking to address their mental health through more natural means, uh, Sign up for one of my consultation groups. I'm trying to make them really affordable and accessible. Um, so go to my website and sign up. And I have one more video in this series.